CI Health is brought to you by Aunt Martha's. We know early detection for cancer does save lives, but there is one cancer that can strike both men and women at any age. For many, there is no family history, but here with more insight from Aunt Martha's Health and Wellness, it's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Charles Barron, back with us. Dr. Barron, we appreciate you being back with us this afternoon. All right, thank you for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk colorectal cancer. It is a cancer that does not discriminate against men or women. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, col colorectal cancer um, is a disease that, as you said, affects uh, men and women. Um, you know, and we generally um, try to look for uh, some signs or symptoms, but the biggest things again is genetics. Um, if you have a strong family history of uh, colorectal cancer screening, that predisposes you uh, to having uh, colorectal cancer, and so you want to um, make your providers aware so that we can start to monitor you and possibly even start screening you at an earlier age. All right. So, what risk factors? Genetics being, I guess, the top one that you just mentioned. Are there any yes. others? No, there's, there's been some uh, studies that have show, uh, shown that diet um, is um, a very, uh, you know, can contribute to uh, developing colorectal uh, cancer. Um, you know, we usually recommend having a high fiber diet, uh, eat plenty of vegetables. Um, and, you know, and there's been some thoughts about the types of food, uh, you know, especially uh, meats, uh, which take a longer uh, time to process through your digestive system, may contribute to it as well. But the biggest thing is just making sure that you, you try to stick to a very high fiber diet. All right, let's talk symptoms because I know for some cancers, it's like there there's no way to screen for it or test for it, specifically like cervical cancer. So when we're talking colorectal cancer, what kind of symptoms might people be noticing and they that might be a red flag? I probably need to go see my doctor. Maybe I need to get screened. What, what may they be looking for? Yeah, so GI, uh, um, cancers that develop in the gastrointestinal system or the GI system sometimes are very uh, tough to, to um, diagnose or to find out or to have symptoms because, you know, it's in the abdomen and cancers can grow and um, without impeding on anything, you may or may not have any immediate symptoms. Uh, but some of the things that you may see with colorectal cancer is pencil thin stools. So your uh, stools may be coming out very thin um, and pencil size, what we call pencil size and not have a voluminous size uh, stool, but very thin. Um, there may be uh, blood in your stool. Um, sometimes it may be dark blood. It could also be uh, uh, red blood or, you know, but it just depends on where it is in the digestive system or where it is in your, in your uh, colon. Um, there may be some vague abdominal pain or just pain just been going on for months and months and months and you just don't know where this pain is coming from. Um, and also, so it could be some weight changes as well. Well, we certainly don't recommend people to let symptoms like that go on for months and months and yeah. months um, because that would not be good. About right. What age do you recommend people who may not have a family history um, of colorectal cancer to be screened? Does everybody so we, need to be screened? <laughs> no, so what we do, unless you, like you said, unless we, you have a significant family history or reasons to get screened earlier, usually we start about 50 years of age uh, okay. for men and women. So, and so there's, uh, yes, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, is the only way to test for colorectal cancer, is that a colonoscopy? Is there a blood test? How, how detailed are we going here? Yeah, so uh, usually just to start, we would uh, either do um, a, a fit test or fecal immunochemical test or a blood, a check for blood in your stools. And that would have to be done annually, once a year. Then if you get a colonoscopy, uh, then that, if that, there you don't find any polyps or anything like that and everything is uh, clear, then you would do that every 10 years. Uh, there's also sigmoidoscopies, which have been done. Um, we don't, I haven't seen them done as much lately, but those are every five years as well. Uh, so the three main tests would be the sigmoidoscopy, the FIT test or fecal occult blood test, where you check for blood in the stool, and then the colonoscopy. Um, you know, you can do CT scans and other different things as well, just based on uh, other indications. But those are uh, the main three. 
All right. Well, it's good to know what to be on the lookout for when it comes to your gut health and managing all of that, and that there are um, great screening options uh, for people to to get things figured out. And we appreciate you sharing all of those with us there at Aunt Martha's. There's their location on the screen in Danville, as well as a phone number and website which you're seeing right there, where we will connect people with if they have maybe any questions about colorectal cancer and the screening process. Dr. Barron, we appreciate you being with us this afternoon. All right, thank you guys. If you have any questions, maybe you want to learn a little bit more, like I just mentioned, we will connect you at CILiving.tv. And we sure do thank Aunt Martha's Health and Wellness for sponsoring today's CI Health segment.